In this video, I'm going to teach you how to build your own user verification system without writing a single line of code in Bubble. Now, why would you need to build a feature like this? If you're creating your own on-demand service like Uber or DoorDash, you might want to be able to verify third-party contractors before they start using your app. Because of course, once you can verify someone, that's going to create a much safer experience for your end users. Now, in today's real-world example, when a contractor signs up to my ride-hailing app, I'm going to have them also upload a copy of their ID, from which I'm then going to create an admin dashboard so I can review that application and choose whether or not I want to either approve or deny their verification. I am McLovin. And of course, like anything in Bubble, your boy always likes to take things that one step further. And that's why today we're also going to create a way to restrict certain features in our application to only those users who have been approved. So that way we don't have any old user getting access to important information that only our delivery drivers should see. Look, at this point, I've already said enough. There's so much that I wanna cover. So let's just grab our bubble editor and we can dive right into it. Throughout our tutorial today, there's quite a few steps involved in the process of creating our own verification feature. So to help us keep track of where we are throughout that build, what I've done is I've just created a quick checklist of all the items I'm gonna cover inside of Notion. Now, by all means, creating a checklist isn't necessary, but it's something that I just personally do whenever I'm building out any feature or fully fledged application. What I love about Notion is that it allows you to add in a checklist of items that you can tick off once you're finished adding these in. And it's just gonna help make sure we don't miss anything along the way. Now, of course, I'll be sure to include a link to this Notion template in the description of this video. So that way you can go ahead and make a copy of this and then you can follow along as I build out everything in real time. But the first thing I wanna do throughout our experience today is just review our database setup. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this tutorial, today we're gonna to be building out a feature similar to something like an Uber or a DoorDash where we have an on-demand service that requires people to sign up as delivery drivers. And before they're allowed to actually start working on our platform, we as the admins will just need to verify their registration and their license from which we can either approve them or reject them. And once the drivers have been approved, it'll give them access to all the features they need to start taking deliveries. But before we build anything out in our app, the first thing I just wanna do is show you the database setup that I would encourage if you wanna build a verification feature. So I'm gonna jump over into a bubble editor that I have previously built out. Now I've taken the time to build out a registration page, but I'll show you this in a moment. As I mentioned, the first thing I want to do is just open up my data tab and show you how I've set up my user data type. So every single time someone creates an account within my app, there's a series of data fields I'd like to store for each user. And the very first field is the account type for this person. So are they going to be a delivery driver or someone that's ordering food? Now, for the sake of this tutorial today, I've set this just as a text field. So whenever someone registers an account, I'm going to store a particular value of what type of person they are in our platform. So are they just a consumer or are they a driver? Now, if you really want it, you could use option sets as well. So that way you could select from a list of pre-vetted options. But for the sake of our tutorial, I wanted to keep things as basic as possible. I don't want you to have to go down the rabbit hole of trying to learn what option sets are if you are brand new to Bubble. So I'm just gonna keep this as simple as possible as a standard text field. Below this, I then have another field which is known as the the approved status. And now this field has been set to a yes, no value because someone will either be approved or they won't be approved. And now what I've also done is I've added a default value here to be no. So that way when someone signs up to our application as a driver, by default, their approved status will be no. They'll only be approved once we say so. So later on, we're gonna build out an internal dashboard that allows us to review all of our requested drivers from which we can then choose to either approve them or reject them. I then also have a data field for a user's license. Now this is just going to be an image because I want someone to take a picture of their license and upload it into our database. We then of course have a name for a user. So that's obviously just the name of the person. We're going to set that as a text field. There's a profile photo. So I've set that as an image. And then the last two main fields here are the user's registration number. Now I've set that as a text field because registration IDs can include both text and numbers. So I'm just going to format that as a text field. And then finally, the very last data field is known as 
our rejected status. So whenever a driver signs up for an account, as I mentioned before, the default value for their approved status will be set to no, but we're also gonna need to create a way to identify all of the users that we've actually rejected. Because if we just say that we don't want them to be an approved driver, they're just gonna sit within this field where it might look like they're a new driver that's signed up. But what we actually wanna do is create a way to identify all of the people that we've reviewed and have turned away. So I've created this rejected status field here, which is once again, a yes, no field type. And I've set a default value of no, because by default, everyone should not be rejected. We'll only want to reject them once we've reviewed their information. Now that is how I've set up my database here. By all means, if you wanna store more information about your users or your drivers, feel free to add in as many data fields as you would like. But just at the bare minimum for my example today, this is all of the information I'll need to store about a user. What I then wanna do is jump over into my design tab and just show you this registration page that I built out. So this is just a sample app that I've created and it's a super simple registration page. On this, I just have fields like the user's name, their profile photo, their email, a password, as well as just a text field where they can add in their registration number. And then finally a picture uploader element where they can upload an image of their license. Now, although I have jumped ahead and I built out this page, I did just want to walk you through the workflow steps involved in signing someone up. So I'm gonna click on my register button here, which of course someone will select once they've finished adding in all of their information. Then I'm gonna to choose to start a workflow. And within this workflow, what I'd like to do is head to our account events and select the sign the user up action. Of course, if you've ever signed someone up to your application in Bubble, you'll just know that they'll need an email and a password by default. So I'm just gonna match the value of this user's email to be the value they've added into our input email field. And then for the password, this is going to be the exact same thing. Now, what I'd also like to do is update some additional data fields for this user. So the first thing I'd like to do is store an account type for this user. So I'm just gonna remove the option to add in dynamic data. And I'm just gonna type this in as the word driver. And of course, again, as I mentioned, if you didn't wanna to have to type this in manually, you could use something like option sets. But for the sake of our tutorial today, I'm gonna to keep it as simple as possible. One thing I will just need to note though is how I've spelt the word driver here. So I've spelt it with a capital D and then the rest of the word is in lowercase. I'll just need to remember that for future reference. But the next field I'd just like to update is going to be the user's license. I should just point out that I won't need to update the user's approved status at this point, because if you remember the user's approved status is set to no by default. So it's not like I need to set their approved status to no within this workflow. It's already been taken care of. So I'm gonna store the user's license, which was an image. And of course, this is gonna be the value of my picture uploader on my page where they can upload an image of their license. Then I'm just gonna jump ahead and store the user's name. This will be the input name on my page. And look, I apologize if I'm running through this relatively quickly, but these fields are pretty standard. There's the user's profile photo. This will be the value of our picture uploader profile photo. Then there was the user's registration number. And that is going to be the input registration field. So input rego. And once again, as you probably saw, there was a field called rejected status. One thing I just wanted to highlight is that I don't need to update the user's rejected status. By default, that value has been set to no. So the main reason why I just wanted to show you how I built out this workflow is not for these fields here, but it's more so just around adding a type of account for this person. So because this is a dedicated page that allows drivers to sign up to my platform, I know that I can mark anyone who signs up through this form as a driver in my data. Database. Now let's just say after this step in our workflow runs, I just like to redirect someone through to a page. What I'm gonna do is just select from a navigation event, choose the go to page action, and I can send them to whatever page I want. I'm just gonna send them to my index page, which has nothing on it. But from here, of course, once a driver has registered an account within my app, what I'd like to do is create a dashboard for the admin of this application. So that'll be you. So that way you can review a list of all of the drivers who have signed up an account and are yet to be approved. And so what I'm gonna do is open up a page that I have pre-built out. Now this is known as my approval dashboard. Now there's not much on this page, but I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of how I've set this up. So on our approval dashboard, as an admin, what I'd like to do is view a list of all of the drivers who are currently awaiting to be approved. And so 
what I've done is I've added a repeating group onto this page here. And this repeating group is just displaying a list of users. And if I open up my data source, I just wanna run you through what particular users I'm going to be searching for in my database. So the first thing I should point out is that when it comes to the users you wanna display, you only wanna display those users where the account type is a driver. You're not gonna to want to display those users who are just consumers. You only want drivers to be displayed because they are the people you need to either approve or reject. Then I'm gonna add two additional constraints. One will only display users where the approved status equals no. So these are the people who have not yet been approved in our application. And of course, if you remember when someone signed up an account by default, their approved status was set to no. So they will automatically be displayed here. But of course, let's say someone has been rejected, their approved status would still sit as no. And we don't want to continually display this person in this list because we've already made our decision about this person. And so to remove that person from the list, I've also added a constraint that only displays users where the rejected status also equals no. Because if the rejected status equals yes, I'm just not gonna want to display that person in this list anymore. And that's everything I've added to the data source of my repeating group. Inside of my repeating group, I've just added three elements. One is just displaying the profile photo of this person. The other's just displaying their name. And then I have a button here, which when clicked will display a pop-up with all of this user's information. So things like their driver's license, as well as their registration number. So if I head over to my elements tree, I've just created a pop-up here. Now on this pop-up, if I was to select on this, I given this a type of content, which is a user, because I'd like to store the value of a particular user in this pop-up. And that is going to be whoever we select from our repeating group on our page. Then what I've done is I've just added in the details of this user. So because we're storing the value of a person in our pop-up, I can reference the parent group's user and display their name, their profile photo, as well as their registration number. And then I've added an image onto our pop-up, which is just going to display the image of the person's license that they have uploaded. Now, one thing I should also point out is how I built out the workflow to display this pop-up. So whenever this view details button is clicked here, I've just built a workflow that's going to send the data of the specific user I want to display in that pop-up. So I've selected from the display data action. So if you ever want to find that, just create a workflow step and type in display data and choose to display data in a group or a pop-up. The pop-up is of course the only pop up on my page. And the data I'd like to display in that is the current sales user we're selecting from our repeating group. So that is the person from the list that we want to select and either approve or reject. Then from here, I'm just selecting to show an element and that element is going to be our pop up. So once again, if you want to find that, just type in the word show, show an element and then select the pop up. I just wanted to show you that. So that way you're not completely lost at how my pop up is going to be displayed. And at this point, one of the last things I want to show you is how we can of course build out the workflows to approve or reject reject a particular driver. But before I do that, I just want to quickly jump back into my Notion checklist and see where we are throughout the whole building process. So at this point in time, we reviewed how our database was set up. I had shown you the registration page I had created and we built out the workflow that would allow someone to register as a driver. I've also just shown you how I built out my admin dashboard. As I mentioned, it's pretty minimalistic. There's not a whole lot of content on that. And of course, I just shown you how I built out the workflows to display our pop-up. But what I'd like to now do is create the feature that allows us to either approve or reject a driver. So if I just jump back into my bubble editor here, open up my pop-up in my elements tree, what you'll see is I've added two buttons here. One to approve this driver once I've viewed all their details, or one to reject them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build out two separate workflows. The first will be the workflow to approve a driver. So I'm going to click on the button. I'm gonna start a workflow whenever this is selected. And within this workflow, I'm just gonna add a couple of steps. The first thing I'd like to do is just make changes to the person whose profile we're viewing, in which case I'm gonna want to update their approved status from no to now be yes. So if I head to my data tab, I'm gonna to choose to make changes to a thing. The thing I'd like to make changes to is the parent group's user. So if you remember, once again, I'm storing the data of someone within my pop-up. So that means that whoever's being displayed in my pop-up, I'm gonna make changes to their account. The field I would like to make the changes to is going to be the approved status. In this case, I'd now like to set this as yes. It truly is as simple as that. That's all I'm gonna to need to change. And then finally, what I'd like to do is add an additional step in my workflow that's then going to hide my pop-up. So it's just gonna close it. So if I head to my element actions, I'm gonna to choose to hide an element. And the element will of course be the pop-up that we're viewing. Now, because we're creating a feature to approve someone, 
What I'd love to do is add a color on this workflow so I can easily differentiate where it sits in my actual workflow editor here. So I'm gonna select on the workflow trigger. I'm gonna to head to the event color and I'm gonna set this to be green because I know this is the workflow that approves someone. And one thing I should point out is that once the user's approve status has been set to yes, they will no longer be visible in our repeating group because if you remember, we're only performing a search for users where the approve status is no. So that's going to automatically remove someone out of that list. Now the last thing we'll need to do is of course build out the workflow to reject someone. So I'm gonna open up my pop-up. I'm gonna select my reject button. I'm gonna to choose to start a workflow whenever this is clicked. And this workflow is gonna be pretty much the exact same as the previous workflow we built out. So I'm gonna to head to our data tab and choose to make changes to a thing. The thing I'd like to change is once again going to be the parent group's user. So that's the user being displayed in my pop-up. And the one field I'd like to change here is going to be the rejected status. Instead of this status being set to no by default in our database, I'd now like to update this this to be yes, which means we have said that we don't want to approve this user. And one thing I should point out is that if you remember, the approve status was obviously set to no by default, so we won't need to make any changes there. It will still remain the same as no. The last thing I'd like to do in this workflow though is just add that additional step to hide my pop-up. So I'm gonna head to my element actions once again, choose to hide an element, and the element will be my pop-up. And now because this is the workflow where we're rejecting a user, I'm gonna select on the workflow trigger, and I'm gonna add update the event color to be red. So that way I know this is my rejection workflow. And of course, similar to before, one thing I should point out is that with the data source of our repeating group, we were only displaying users where the rejected status had equaled no. So if someone has been rejected, they will also be removed from this list. Now, what I'd love to do before I show you anything else is just run a preview of this application. So from the sign up process to the step where I'm an admin either approving or rejecting drivers, just so that way you can get a real sense of how this is going to function. So what I'm gonna do is just open up my registration page that I had shown you before. I'm gonna run a preview of this. And what I'd love to do is just add in some information for an account that I'd like to register as a driver. So I'm just gonna jump ahead and add those details in. And in my example today, we are going to register an account as the one and only McLovin. Registration details, big love. And of course, we've got that authentic Hawaiian ID that he's going to be approved with. I'm then gonna select to register an account here. This workflow will run and it's going to create that account in my database. Then if I jump over into my admin dashboard where I can see a list of all of the people who have registered as a driver in my platform, what I can do is at the bottom of my list, see that we have McLovin here. He's caught my attention because I think he's gonna be a great delivery driver. So I'm gonna to want to view the details of his account. I'm gonna open this up here and what you'll see is his registration number. So that way I can perform any background checks as well as an image of his license. Now, because this guy looks like the kind of person I want as a delivery driver in my platform. I'm gonna to choose to approve them. One thing I should just do is just quickly move my head out of the way here because when I approve McLovin, what you'll see is that my pop-up is going to hide and it's then going to remove him from this list because he has already been approved as a driver. Now let's say I wanted to reject someone. So let's say Tracy Shaw here, I'm gonna view her account. I can see that she's registered as a driver but she hasn't given me her registration number or her license. And so what I wanna do is actually reject her. I'm going to click this button, that workflow will run and it's once again going to remove Tracy from that list. And that is how you can build out the feature to either reject or approve someone as an admin within your own internal dashboard. So what I'm gonna do is just jump back into my Notion checklist and I'm going to tick off that we've finished building out that feature. And the very last thing I wanna do is just show you how we can create an experience that excludes certain features to only those drivers in our application that have been approved. So let's say you've got a page in your application that you only want approved drivers to be able to see, or if you've got some sort of element that you only wanna to show to approved drivers, this is exactly how you can create that experience. So we're gonna jump back into our bubble editor. And now what I'm gonna do is open up another page I've created called my driver dashboard. And now on this page, in theory, you would have a long list of all of the incoming deliveries that someone could accept. But of course, you only want people who are drivers to be able to view this page. If you wanted to restrict it to only this group of select people, what you could do is create a workflow that runs every single time the page is loaded that just 
quickly verifies if the person viewing this page is in fact an approved driver. And of course, if they're not, we're then gonna redirect them away from this page. So that way they can't see any of this information. And so the way you could do this is by jumping over into your workflow editor and you can create a brand new workflow from scratch. And we can have this run every single time the page is loaded. And now in this workflow, what I'd like to do is create a condition that just filters out anyone who is not an approved driver. And so what I'm gonna do is create a condition that only allows this workflow to run when the current user, so the person who's loading this page, when their account type is not a driver, and so I'm gonna type in the word driver. Now, again, one thing I should point out is the way in which I've spelt driver here. It has a capital D and the rest of the word is in lowercase because that is exactly how I'd spelt it when I'd allocated that account type to our drivers in our platform. Then I'd also like to recognize that I want to filter out anyone whose approved status is currently set to no. So I'm going to select the or option. And from here, I'm gonna select when the current user, their approved status is no. And then finally, I'll select the or option one last time. And I'm going to recognize if the current user, their rejected status is in fact, yes. What I'd like to do is send someone away from this page because I don't want someone with an account that has any of these values or options here to be able to view the contents of this page. So what I'm going to do is select from a navigation event, choose the go to page action, and then I will set the destination page as my home page. So I'll just say the index page. And now that's just going to gate this page to only people who do not have accounts of this value. So it's only going to allow people who are a driver, who have been approved and who has not yet been rejected to view this page. Because of course this condition won't apply to anyone else aside from the people who meet these values. And now that is how you can create a filter on your actual workflow itself. But one last thing I should just point out is how you can create this on let's say an element on your page that you only want to show to certain people. So in my case, drivers that have been approved Approved. So if I jump to my design tab, I have previously added a button onto this page. And let's say if this is a driver's dashboard, what I'm going to do is add a button on here that just says the word view orders. And so let's say I only want drivers who have been approved to be able to view all these orders. So to stop someone who is not an approved driver from being able to select this button, what I've gone ahead and done is I've jumped to my layout tab and I've unselected that this element should not be visible on page load, which means it's going to be hidden. I've also selected to collapse this element when it's hidden. So that way it doesn't take up any empty space on my page. And then what I've done is I've created a condition on this element, which is the exact opposite to the condition we've added on our workflow trigger. And in fact, what I should really do is just explain to you how I built this from scratch. So in this instance, this button is currently invisible on our page. And so what we wanna do is obviously only display it to those users who are registered as approved drivers. So we're gonna define a condition and we're gonna recognize if the current user, if their account type is in fact a driver. And once again, I've spelt that the same way in which I've registered that value on someone's account when they signed up. And then what I'd like to do is select the and option, not the or option in this case, because I'm gonna want to compound these filters on top of each other. So I'm gonna say if the current user's account type is a driver and the same user, their approved status, if it is yes, and if the same user, once again, their rejected status is in fact no. What I'd like to do is select that this element should be visible and tick that that should be true, which means we're now granting access to someone who is an approved driver that has not yet been rejected. And that is how you can create a way to gate or restrict certain features on your page to only those who have been validated and approved inside of your application. So what I'm just gonna do is jump back into my Notion checklist and tick off that we've finally finished building out the last feature which concludes everything I wanted to cover within this tutorial. And just like that, you can see how easy it is to create your own user verification system without writing a single line of code in Bubble. Of course, you can easily retrofit this feature into any other application you're creating, regardless of the use case. So I really hope this tutorial saved you a whole bunch of time having to figure that out from scratch. Now, if you liked this video, I'd always recommend you hit the subscribe button on my channel so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop any future Bubble tutorials because I've got a whole lot of content coming out in the future that I think you might find useful. In the meantime though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey. <laughs>